P-values have an important role in statistics and are used in many places such as hypothesis testing, t-tests and regression analysis. In hypothesis testing, p-values help us determine whether the results of a hypothesis test are significant or not and whether we should retain the null hypothesis. While the concept sounds simple, it is very easy to misinterpret the p-values. Before we get to understanding p-values, let's first briefly review what is null hypothesis. Many times, we want to test the validity of a statement. For example, is the mean return from this mutual fund more than the mean return from the benchmark? While answering such a question, our interest is not to find the actual mean returns of the mutual fund, but to test whether the statement holds true or not. Such a statement is called a hypothesis and a hypothesis test is a standard procedure to test the hypothesis. There could be two possible results. The hypothesis is correct and hence should be accepted and the hypothesis is incorrect and should be rejected. When we form a hypothesis to be tested, the hypothesis is called a null hypothesis. A null hypothesis will be a simple statement about the population parameter. For example, the null hypothesis is that the mean return of a mutual fund is 8%. The alternative hypothesis is the hypothesis accepted when the null hypothesis is rejected. That is, the mean returns of the mutual fund are not equal to 8%. In hypothesis testing, the researcher is generally trying to challenge the null hypothesis by using sample data to draw conclusions about an entire population. Let's take another example. Let's say a trader has built an investment strategy that he believes has higher average returns compared to just buying and holding the stock. In this case, the null hypothesis will state that there is no difference between the average returns from his strategy and the buy and hold strategy. The trader wants to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis that the returns from his strategy are in fact higher than the buy and hold strategy. The trader wants to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis that the returns from his strategy are in fact higher than the buy and hold strategy. In order to prove this, the trader will compare the returns from his strategy and the buy and hold strategy based on a random sample of stocks. Based on this random sample, he may find that his strategy produces better returns. However, this may not really be true because he is looking at the sample and not the entire population. This is because of the sampling error, which is the difference between a sample and a population. Since we are taking a sample, it's possible that another random sample will produce different results than the first one. In order to reject the null hypothesis, we need to show the statistical significance of the results. P-values are one such tool that can help us determine the statistical significance of the results. P-value provides us with evidence against a null hypothesis. P-value assumes that the null hypothesis is true and the observed difference in the sample was due to sampling error. To clearly understand P-values, remember that you want to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis and you're conducting the hypothesis test using sample data to draw conclusions about the population. A p-value or probability value is a number that describes how likely it is that your results occurred by random chance. For example, let's say the p-value of a hypothesis test is 0.025 or 2.5%. This means that there is a 2.5 chance that your results are random. In this case, you would reject the null hypothesis because 2.5% is a very small probability that your results are random, which also means that your results supporting the alternative hypothesis are highly believable. 
On the other hand, a high p-value of 0.9 or 90% means that your results have a 90% chance of being completely random and having nothing to do with your experiment. In this case, you would retain the null hypothesis and reject the alternative hypothesis because your results in support of the alternative hypothesis are highly random and not to be believed. For this reason, the smaller the p-value, the more significant your result. The smaller the p-value, the higher the evidence that you should reject the null hypothesis. Generally, a p-value below a significance threshold of 5% or 0.05 is considered statistically significant. If the p-value is below 0.05, you reject the null hypothesis. If it is above 0.05, you accept the null hypothesis. Let's take one more example. Let's say an economist wants to know whether the average electricity bill of households in a state has gone up compared to the previous year. The null hypothesis is that there is no difference between the average electricity bill of households in this year compared to the previous year. The alternative hypothesis is that the average household bill this year is higher than the previous year. Let's assume that in the previous year, the average electricity bill was $100 per month for the population of the state. The researcher then takes a random sample of 30 families and calculates the average monthly electricity bill for this year. Let's say that based on this sample of 30 households, the average electricity bill comes to $120. This is higher than the previous year's average of $100. Instead of simply accepting or rejecting the null hypothesis based on the sample, the researcher will calculate the p-value. The p-value will help him accept or reject the null hypothesis. Let's say the p-value is 0.02 or 2%. At a significance level of 5% with a p-value of 2%, the researcher will reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis that the average electricity bills this year for the population are higher than the previous year. This is because there is only a 2% chance that the results from the sample are random. So, the results of the sample are believable and a good representative of the population.